But let's bring in the laureate of 2006, Edmund Phelps of Columbia uh, University. McVicker professor, 30 years next year. 30 years next year is a more than that more than that. more than that more than i got that. my math wrong yeah <laughs> okay let, let's um let's frame longer here uh the long-term view of where we are now our economic growth everybody's searching for a way to get that jump started again can yeah. government policy do it well yes there must be things the government could do uh, that would be good for business activity, good for uh, entrepreneurial zeal and, and uh, optimism and everything. But, you know, it's awfully hard to know exactly what those things uh, would be. Uh, doing something on the corporate profits tax would probably help a bit, but we might have to wait a year or two before we could right. feel effective. And politicians that. don't have that what year or two do that. Right. So there's a chart. Let's look at this. I, I made this chart just for you. This is one of our long term view charts that we're putting together. Persistent and rising US economic growth. What a picture from nineteen forty seven. That's a log scale. Right. So slope matters and it's it, it, remarkable how persistent it's been. Well, but it, it, it's uh, I, I've had discussions with uh, Bob Gordon at Northwestern and other yeah. people. Uh, <clears throat> that's what I was saying to Bob. I was saying, Bob, I don't see any real slowdown here. But if you look at it very carefully, if you blow it up, next, right. time, next time we'll have to blow it up, uh, then you will see that beginning about 1975, that slope is definitely flatter. And when you go underneath the um, output per unit labor to look at the combination of uh, uh, you look at and when you look at output uh, as a ratio to capital and labor right. a mix of the two then you see a tremendous slowdown uh, in the mid 1970s there's a there's a the, the, the interesting dynamics here of productivity <laughs> earlier this morning on Bloomberg surveillance I spoke with Brian Westbury the optimist of FT advisors and I asked him what effect he thought government stimulus had on economic growth I believe if we would have changed mark-to-market accounting before or never put it in place in November of 07 or changed it in early 08, we would not have needed TARP. We would not have needed all this government stimulus. In fact, I think we wouldn't have had a recession. Brian Westbury of FT Advisors. I mean, the debate here, the political debate, does it engage you? Over, oh. over this crisis that we're in and this attempt to get out of a new normal? Does, does the whole right-left uh, thing engage a laureate? I, I'm a humanoid. I, I get involved in those things, of course. Right sure. exclusive uh, Ned Phelps is a humanoid. Okay, <laughs> but, but, but which way should we go? I mean, <clears throat> Krugman's out there writing about every six hours, do this, do this, do this. Danny Blanchflower out there talking it up. Tell us about how the politics folds into this. I think each of the political parties is trying to uh, continue to look good with its constituency and, and trying to push the right buttons. But uh, I find so much of this talk to be totally irresponsible. We cannot afford more fiscal stimulus now. Right. We have massive deficits in, in prospect and, and the debt, public debt and that GMP ratio is already close to 100% and that doesn't count the entitlements. It, we're, in a, we're in a desperate situation on the fiscal mm. side. Rex, bring up the speech quote that I've got here. This, folks, was the speech of the crisis as far as I'm concerned. I've told many people this. The prospective structural slump, Ned Phelps in Switzerland at the Bank of International Settlements, I can't believe we're pushing three years ago, yet such subsidies will not suffice for high prosperity. It is necessary to increase dynamism. The financial sector seem not to be oriented towards innovation. Where is that <coughs> dynamic thing that you've written so much about, where's that new dynamism coming from? I don't think we have any new dyna dynamism. We've lost the old dynamism. Um, I think that's, that's really what is behind the weakness of business investment activity and business hiring. And, and that in turn is what's behind the lousy employment numbers and, and the high unemployment rate. When you 
were writing Political Economy and your other books, yeah. did that dynamism, was it protected by borders and now with globalization, has our dynamism in some ways filtered abroad to other geographies where we don't benefit? Well, that's an interesting point, Tom. I, uh, some people say, when I, sometimes when I say a few words to try to say a few words on behalf of dynamism, uh, an economist will say back to me, well, if you did get some uh, new innovation going, the hardware, the manufacturing of it would all be done in China anyway, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't actually create any jobs here. Um, I, I, I think there's, there's, some, there's some point in that, but uh, look, if we can do things that will raise the rate of growth of productivity, I don't care how it comes about. That will right. itself create lots of jobs. Well, let's see. I want to bring up a great, great quote buried, I think, 20 years ago in a Phelps classic, Seven Schools of Macroeconomic Thought. Still, economic matters are often sufficiently complex that we fail, but it may turn into a saving interpretation. Humility is in order. We get so much wrong in economics. And then you were talking about Keynes here. We get so much wrong, and then our model or what we're thinking of all of a sudden can become valid down the road. I mean, there's just so much complexity going on. Do you look at this crisis that we're in right now as a simple crisis, or is it a complex crisis? Uh, for me, it's the most complicated crisis I've ever seen or ever hoped to see. Uh, I think it just, it's just enormously complicated. And the financial sector has gotten so so complex it's uh, very hard to understand uh, where we are, how much help or how much drag we're getting from the financial sector. I, I, I just, uh, <clears throat> I think we just have to uh, bank on the uh, natural recuperative uh, powers of the economy. Uh, it's still the case that new ideas are produced and so I think there's a, got to be a, a mounting backlog of, of as yet undeveloped new ideas that, that, that's piling up. Okay, that's, and, and I think that'll, that'll, that'll push us forward. If that's a neoclassical, mm -hmm. neoliberal thought that we can let the system work its way out, do we work our way out to a gilded age or a plutocracy or a <laughs> narrow group of successful people all trying to get their kids into Colombia? Or can we disperse that across the entire people's economy? I object to that neoliberal thing. I, I thought I, you would. <laughs> there's, some, there's some economics inside jokes I, I, here. Going I, uh, yeah. <laughs> are uh, are but, we going to uh, see another Gilded Age? <clears throat> I think we're already in something of a Gilded Age, aren't we? Uh, no, I just was um, reading a, a book last night by um, Don Peck that <laughs> it was so sad. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But on the other hand, the people at the bottom of the economic ladder have not done all that badly in this uh, mm -hmm. slump. And the people who were in the uh, so-called upper middle class uh, with good college degrees and so forth, they're okay too. It's this group in the lower middle class who uh, don't have college in their background, right. uh, who, who's, who proved to have been so vulnerable in this mm -hmm. uh, downturn. And it's hard to understand. I want to go from Europe to mm -hmm. Africa. Earlier this morning on Bloomberg Surveillance, I spoke with Sebastian Malaby, his wonderful book, More Money Than God, and I asked him uh, why he thinks Minister Lagarde of France is the wrong choice for the IMF. The Europeans are completely messing up the handling of the uh, sovereign debt crisis in Greece, Ireland, Portugal, and so on. And to choose a leader of the IMF who has been at the center of the formulation of this failed strategy is just a, a, a bad move. You want somebody who's going to come in with fresh ideas, a fresh perspective, and, and speak some truth to power. Do we need an economist, Ned Phelps, at the IMF to run it, not a politician? I was thinking that uh, it would be good to have a very good economist in that position instead of having a politician. Now, I don't think Madame Lagarde qualifies as a, as a, a politician. Uh, this is not with regard to her at all, but I, I think it should almost be a civil service job of the highest possible for, sort for an economist mm, of, of demonstrated range and judgment. And um, I'm surprised that it's being, uh, it's become sort of a political football. Very good, thank you so much for coming in.